So, if you're somebody who enjoys math or just watching YouTube, you probably have stumbled upon the channel 3 Blue 1 Brown before. There's a bunch of stuff that's good about 3 Blue 1 Brown, but one of the first things that you notice is the animations in his videos. Today, I'm going to show you how these are done and how you can make your own. So, it turns out that the creator of 3 Blue 1 Brown actually made a Python library himself to make these custom animations. And basically, it's called Manim, which stands for Mathematical Animation Engine. But before we get started, there's an important thing to note. And that is that there's two versions of Manim. So this is the original version, the original repository. And then there's another one, which basically somebody copied. It's managed by other people. And the goal of this one is basically to make it as easy to install and set up as possible. So this is a recommended version to use currently, I think. And I couldn't get this one to set up, and it requires you to download a bunch of other stuff. So this is the one that we're going to go with. To install this, we're just going to go to www.madam.community, which is linked over here. And then we're just going to click Documentation. And you can see on the side, there's something called Installation. So we can just click that and basically follow it through for whatever operating system you're on. Mine is macOS, but if you're on Windows, you can just follow um, what they said to use. And after that, everything should be the same. You can do a bit of research on how that's installed. There's one called a FFmpeg, which is basically responsible for rendering the videos. And then there's actual Manim. So you need Python installed on your computer. You can basically just copy and paste this command. And that's basically it. There's also like optional dependencies, which are latex. And it's basically a format that allows you to write mathematical equations. And if you don't have that, you can basically just write normal text and draw shapes but you won't be able to like format nice equations clearly. So you can also do a bit of research on whether you should install that. Of course, the next operating system is macOS, and it also tells you the stuff that you need to install. Um, I'm not going to go over how these are done because it gives you more detailed instructions. But after you're done, you should be able to go to a terminal or command line and just type manim, and it should display a bit of text that verifies that saying it's correctly installed and it exists, basically. And now we can actually get on with the actual coding part. So now what you're going to do is just open your text editor and create a new file. And we can just save it on our desktop and call it scene.py. It doesn't matter what you name it, you, it just has to be a Python file basically. And now you have that open. So I'm just going to make this full screen and you also have to keep your terminal open. And I'm just going to do cd desktop here to go to the correct folder that the Python file is in. And now we should be set up and ready to go. So of course, the first thing that we're going to do is import manim by typing from manim import asterisk, which basically imports everything from that library. And then what we're going to do is make a class. And each class is basically kind of like its own animation or video. So we can just make a class, name it whatever we want, and then we put parentheses. And in here, we're going to type scene. Basically, this means that this class kind of like inherits from the scene class. Now inside, all we need to do is basically create a function called def construct self. And in here, we're going to put all of our code. So let's just start with something pretty simple and make a variable called circle. So circle equals circle. So that creates a circle object. And at this point, it does not show anything onto the screen. It just creates an object, but does nothing with it, kind of. If you want to show it, you have to call the function self.add circle. And that will actually show it onto the screen. But this is kind of boring. All it does is just that it basically pops up on the screen. It does nothing. Like it's, there's no animations. There's nothing cool. And if you want an animation, we can basically use a different method called self dot play. So this basically you have to pass it in an animation. And the animation that we're gonna use is a create animation. So we're gonna say create circle. And that's all the code needed for this simple example. Now all we need to do is basically type the command manim and then dash p for preview, q for quality, and low for low quality. And then we can pass in the scene.py, the name of the file, and then type in the name of the class. So you might notice that technically in this Python file, nothing is running. All we're doing is this finding class, right? There's nothing that calls this function. It does not do anything. But the thing is that because we called manim, it actually reads the class and not just like runs the Python file. So if we do this, 
you should see that it generates a video. And it should just automatically open it up here, so when you play it, you can see it's just a one second video of a circle being drawn onto the screen. And if you want to access it later, all of your videos are in this media folder that I created automatically. And then you just click videos, scene, the correct resolution, and your video should be in here. Okay, so let me just expand on this example a bit. For example, let's create another object called a square, and we can just say square like that. And what we can do this time is that I'm going to change the circle into a square. So basically, instead of the create animation, I'm going to use a transform animation. So transform parentheses and then pass in circle square. So that transforms the circle into a square. And now if you play it, it will give you this very nice animation of a circle transforming into a square. Maybe you thought the video was a little bit too fast and you wanted to be a bit slower and more spaced out. What you can do is use the function self dot wait and basically it adds a little bit of a pause between each of the animations. By default if you pass it in nothing it waits for one second and you can pass it a number which is equivalent to how many seconds you want to wait. You can also pass in a parameter to the self dot play method called runtime and that basically gives you how long it is. By default, the duration is 1 second. You can change it to 2 to make it slower. And now you can see that there's a lot more spacing between the transitions. And at the end, it stays there for a while. So let's move the square around a little bit. And one thing to realize is that we're still referring to it as a circle because we are only transforming the circle into the square. So we have actually changed the circle object itself into the square. We have never actually drawn the square itself. So if you want to move it around, we still have to use the circle variable. The ways that we can move it around is shift, rotate, and scale. So we can do like shift, up, in all capitals, that's all you need to do. You can also do circle dot rotate 0.3, and you can also do circle dot uh, scale 2. And let's just do a little bit of weight before that. And here's what you get you can see that it kind of jumps instantaneously. If you want it to go smoothly between that, what you have to do is call self.play, and this time the animation will be called apply method. And you can basically say circle.shift without the parentheses, so you only are naming it, and so you type up like that. So we can just copy and paste this basically for all three of that. So circle.rotate, 0.3, and circle.scale2. So now you can see that it kind of moves smoothly between all of them. And now that you understand the basics of how everything works, let's just make another example called class. And we're going to make it called counting. And this time we're going to work with numbers and text and basically make an animation of a number just gradually counting up from 0 to 10, for example. So what we can do is basically create the same thing as before, create the function construct. And here we're just going to say number equals text, like that. And we can just give it the text of zero. Remember to put it in string, so it's not actual numbers. And what we can do is basically for i in range 10, we can just do self.play transform number into a new piece of text so we don't even need to like assign a variable to this we can just create it right here and what we're just going to do is string i basically like that and also we have to do this so to create it we can say create text but there's another purpose built animation for text and that's called write and it gives you this very cool animation that you will see so with that done what we can do of course is manum quality pql for low quality dot py and then this time we're going to enter counting as our class also if you don't want a low quality one you can also do pqk or pqh for high quality and k for 4k and you can see all of the numbers just smoothly transitioning between each other So the point of this basic example is of course to show you how the text works, which is very similar to the shapes that I introduced previously, and also to show you that it doesn't have to just be like one command after the other, you can still use the normal programming things like a for loop and if statements. So now there's one last thing that 
So before we wrap up, I'm going to show you something else called updaters. And that basically is like a variable that you can change like and animate. So we're just going to make a new class, just like the normal setup. And here we're going to create two uh, objects. So number equals text. I'm going to give a value of 1. And also circle equals circle. And now we're going to create the value updater. And you can kind of create it like any other object. So we're going to give it the name of radius equals to value tracker 1. So that basically assigns the, uh, the radius with a value of 1. And now what we're going to do is add updaters to the number and circle. So we can use the function updater, add updater. And what it does is basically a, you can pass in a function to it. And that function is called repeatedly every single frame. And you can just modify the number whenever you want. And so we're just going to create a lambda function. And one of the parameters it passes in is the uh, element itself. So we can actually just do that. And then num.become, which is a special function, basically it replaces the current object with a new object. And what we can do is basically text. And here we're just going to put string radius dot get value and that's basically how we do it for this one the same thing we're going to do it for the circle we can add another updater another lambda and basically this time the circle will become a new circle with radius equals to radius dot get value and i forgot to do this part another thing that would be good to do is to round this radius because by default it has a lot of decimal places so we're just going to round this one for the text to only show you basically three decimal places like that and here at the bottom all we need to do is animate the radius itself and no need to animate the number and the circle individually so what we can do is basically just self.play apply method radius dot set value and then we can set it to 2 and basically we're done and you can see we have a circle that grows in size and also a piece of text that shows its radius but that's basically it for this video I show you how to do installation and how to do most of the basic stuff such as creating objects and making simple animations there's a bunch more to learn of course so I encourage you to click on the example gallery section on the website and you can see all of the different stuff that they have made. So if you learned something from this video, make sure to like and also subscribe. And I will see you next time.